What's up, everybody? So I'm in the shop today. It's like negative 16 outside. So I didn't go to any customer's house today. I do got stair stuff to finish. I got a cabinet to finish. I got some wood to mill up. I got a cabinet door to mill up. But I don't want to do any of that today. So I think I'm going to make a piece of art. Let's do it. So first I grabbed just the two by eight length of poplar that I had sitting in the shop. I came with another order and I started milling it down, trying to get it close to flat. I don't need anything perfect for this project. So I didn't have to join it or anything. I just got all the roughness off of it. And then I'm gonna take it over my chop saw and just cut it into smaller, more manageable pieces. Uh, this big long 10 foot length is pretty heavy and I don't need it this long. I'm going to cut it up into a bunch of little cubes. So there's no need to have a piece this big and crazy to deal with. Now, before you get angry with that I'm wasting this giant chunk of wood on a little project like this. Well... I got all of that, all of that, and a bit more that I've already used for 800 bucks. So pretty good deal for around here. So I'm okay with wasting a bit. And then I'm gonna run them through the planer one more time just to get them a little flatter and smoother before I move on to the table saw. And then I'm carefully gonna cut them into inch and a half by inch and a half strips on my table saw. I've got a cross cut sled here that I've made just out of plywood and I've cut a little angle block to the angle that I want on the tops of my pieces. I'm just gonna line them up on this uh, to batch cut a bunch at a time. I started out on the miter saw, but since I needed like 300 of these, it was just gonna take way too long to cut one at a time. And I just found this work way quicker. If you're not comfortable with doing this, I would probably just stick with the miter saw. But for me, this was a much easier, quicker solution. And then I could just get that bump stop out of the way, line my pieces up on a mark that I had on there, which on these pieces, I was cutting them at two inches tall. And then I can run them through a second time with a straight cut now and be able to cut, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 at a time, as opposed to one at a time on my miter saw. And then I went to the very tedious task of sanding all these little cubes. I just clamped a palm sander to my bench and I went to work just taking off all the little rough edges. I'm not trying to make them smooth, just get rid of any of the burrs. And luckily I had this random chunk of plywood so I didn't have to cut anything. So I just figured I'd stain this whole piece black and then whatever size piece I end up needing, I'll just cut it down to that after. I didn't really have a specific size for this piece. I just decided I was gonna cut up this amount of wood and see what it made me. And I'm only staining this black just in case there's any gaps or cracks in between the block. I don't wanna see raw wood behind it. So this block just kind of eliminates anything you might see between them. And then I took probably 40 minutes getting all these pieces laid out exactly how I wanted them uh, in an orientation that looked cool and that actually was good with the amount of pieces I had. This was very tedious, but it's worth taking the time now because once you go to glue later, you don't want to be messing around with the pattern.
So since I did the math perfectly and, and it turned out exactly right, the pieces are the exact size of the, oh, don't, don't worry about that. No, okay, yeah. Definitely the right amount of pieces. So I just cut a random amount and we're gonna just cut it down to this size. This is gonna be our finished size. And then I took not one, but two torches and started charring these just a little bit. I didn't want a ton of char, but just to darken them up a little bit so I don't have that super yellowy wood. And then I just started trying to figure out a pattern that I like pulling them out and I'm going to do multiple colors. So this is just my dark blue center line that I'm going to start with. And once I've got them all painted up, I just started popping them back in and continuing on with this trend. And I wasn't trying to get these things fully coated. I still wanted to be able to see the wood through it and to be able to see a bit of that charring. So I wasn't going too, too heavy with this paint. You can obviously go as heavy as you want. If you want these solid paint color, it might take a couple coats. Uh, you might want to prime them first too. And then we just went into taking pieces out, painting them the color we wanted, and popping them back into our pattern over and over and over again. And while editing this, I realized how often I randomly whistle while I'm working in the shop, apparently. So that's what that noise is. And then the next day, once all that paint had dried, I just started slathering some glue around and taking a full row at a time and moving it over to the other side of the board. And I didn't tape this, but I just took some scrap red oak that I had in my shop and made just a little picture frame to frame around it. I just nailed it and wood glued it together. And then I'm just staining that black as well. Now that all of my pieces are dry, I'm gonna run this whole slab through the table saw and cut off all that excess plywood that I don't need anymore. Now I'm just gonna fit this frame around this whole piece. I had a couple of these little blocks pop out for me banging on it. I'm just gonna brad nail this to that half inch plywood backer. And then with a scrap piece of wood, I'm gonna cut what is called a French cleat. So it's just gonna be two angled boards that kind of hook into each other and you'll see what those look like in a second. I'm just cutting that one strip in half so that I have two pieces that I can connect together with the exact same angle. And then this is gonna get glued and nailed and then I'll add some screws after to really secure it to this backer board. And then I'm adding just a little piece at the bottom to space it off the wall properly so it's not sitting on an angle or anything. Then I just added some drywall screws to the back of this. These are inch and five eighths drywall screws. Should be more than strong enough to hold this piece up even though it is quite substantially heavy. And now I'm in my office. I'm just trying to find the center of where I want this to land. And I'm just marking out a couple marks. And I take a stud finder to find the studs because we definitely want to hang this into studs. This guy's a little bit too heavy to use wall anchors or anything like that. And then I'm just going to mount my French cleat on the line that I've marked out with the angle angling out so that the piece that's hooked to the back of my 
piece of art can hook onto that and sit on there nice and firmly and secure. And ta-da! Art! I think. Maybe. So I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this, I would really appreciate it. If you liked, subscribed, maybe check out some more of my videos. I got tons more to come.